Okay, hi guys. So, today is a much better day. <clears throat> what keeps stinging this, Sydney? All right, <clears throat> today is a much better day. It's, um, you know, not that it was, it was sad, um, but we did celebrate Mavin. <clears throat> I hope you all had a blessed Mavin, that was great. Um, we had a really nice ritual. I had to take my son to his first interview today. So if you saw that, he looked so handsome, which he did very, very well. <clears throat> but it was the beginning of my Bills game. And so as I was walking in the door, my oldest son called me and said, who does your team think they are? <clears throat> I said, I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm running up the stairs to get the TV on because my husband's actually home for a game. So he gets the downstairs TV because he doesn't get it very often. <clears throat> anyway, my son said, they're playing like a Super Bowl team. And I'm like, really? Because <laughs> we've not been doing very well. So, <clears throat> a quick turn on the TV. It was uh, 17 to nothing. They're, he's like, yeah, they sacked him and uh, Kirk Cousins and they all this stuff. So, if you're not American, I apologize. But, as soon as I turn the TV on, they, uh, <laughs> Josh Allen, our quarterback, through almost an interception. I'm like, okay, record, turn it off. I'm gonna do videos this afternoon. So here I am, instead of watching my bills, I felt like I'm not gonna jinx them because I wasn't watching, they were doing great. So I will not be watching my game. I'm gonna watch it later and do my videos earlier, which is awesome. It's like 65 degrees, the sun is shining, the skies are blue. There's not a whole lot of bugs because it's a little bit too chilly. It's perfect. I love, it's autumn now. How much more awesome could this be? So, yesterday after my, you know, emotional morning, I decided to do some retail therapy and I called my mother and said, let's go to Savers. And we went to Savers and Goodwill. And I definitely did retail therapy. So, I have some stuff to show you though. It's always so fun, but I don't know which one to do first. Should I do the books first and then get them out of the way? Probably. All right. So I'm going to get my regular glasses out. I'm going to do the books and do them on a separate video. Um, I think I will do the kids' books first because that will make it easier. Oh, I'll show you what that is. Uh, that will make it easier later to like get them out of the way and do them first. Is there any kids' books in here? Okay, perfect. All right, so let's get started. I'm so excited. I just had, uh, I had really a lot of fun for once with my mother, which is not easy sometimes. Um, and a couple times she tried to do her control thing, but I was able to back her off enough that we still were able to have fun, which is nice because we don't get to have that very much. My mother is just too controlling, usually. And we end up getting into it because I'm like, it's none of your business. You're getting paid your rent because we rent my grandparents' house actually from her. We pay the mortgage and stuff. Long story. Okay, here we go. So I got some awesome kids' books. I love savers for books. Um, and I'm really glad that we went there. Um, I think... Yes. Okay. So the first books that I'm going to show you are from Savers. Um, and the kids' books there, the most expensive they can be is $1.29. So, and then you get four books at $1.29. And then the fifth book you get free. So every time you go there, if you buy five books, you, bu you pay for four. And um, the, the fifth one is free. So I always try to go in, okay, here's five kids' books, five kids' books. Uh, the adult books, the most expensive, if you get this big, huge coffee table book that has tons of gorgeous photos in it. Hey, I'm doing a video. I hear you. What kind of bird are you? Oh, of course you're a blue jay. You're a jerk. <laughs> they are so mean. Do you hear him? He's like, everybody get away from the bird feeder. I'm coming. I hear you. So uh, the most expensive book is $3.49 and again four books and the fifth book is free so big deal I mean really it's a great deal 
So if you have a savers, I highly encourage you to look at books there. Sometimes the witchy books are not in the religious section. They are kind of hidden. So you kind of have to go through a whole bunch of different sections, but just spend a, you know, spend some time there looking through. I've looked, um, the YA section, the young adult section, a lot of times has our witchy books in there because they don't realize that they're not fiction. Um, but I, I like YA, YA books too. It depends on, you know, the author. Some of them are a little, a little too campy. Okay. Five minutes in and I haven't started. Okay, so Jane Yolen is one of my favorite authors for kids' books. She is very nature-based. She always talks about animals and the environment and nature. So anytime I see one of her books, I buy it. Uh, this one is by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. It says, how do dinosaurs say goodnight? And they always have great pictures in them. Oh, look at, oh, how cute. So they have all different kinds of dinosaurs here, which is uh, like Apatosaurus, and he's, you know, eating from the trowel there. Allosaurus, he's a, a sports guy, like all-star. Uh, Corythosaurus, so he's reading. It's so cute. So they've made up some, you know, dinosaur names. Um, but really gorgeous pictures. And, um, oh, does he fall on the top of his covers and cry? <laughs> Let me get him. He's cute. So I have no idea, to be honest with you, what this book is about, but I know it's Jane Yolen, so I know it's going to be a animal-friendly book. Perfect. This one, I couldn't wait. This one is called uh, Fairyopolis, a flower fairy's journal. And I have a couple of these types of books. I have one that's called Dragonology that is the same kind of thing, and I have one about Egypt that is the same kind of thing. And these books are so interesting. Look, there's like a little gem on the front. And then you open it up and it looks like someone's journal, like they have been journaling about fairies. It is by, hmm, here, I'll just show you. It is something J. Warren and Company, maybe. Um, so there's all kinds of, look, there's a, what looks like a real photograph and it says stuff on the bottom there's stuff that you can that are hidden in here there look at what looks like a postcard um, and then there's all kinds of information about fairies now I would say this is probably not going to be an actual fay book but you never know you know they sometimes they do research so that they know that the actual fae um, don't like certain things or do like certain things or this attracts them so it doesn't mean that you can't find any real information and these are just gorgeous books hold on look at the map so there's i love these kind of books there's all kinds of interesting fold outs and stuff hidden in there that you wouldn't normally see in regular books, like this is probably a letter, an actual letter from somebody. We can pull it out. Oh, this says, extremely delicate, almost transparent in parts. Could disintegrate if handled roughly. So this is obviously a very fragile treasure. I bet you this has something to do with being able to see the fairies. Um, I, just I just adore these books and they're pretty long and they have all kinds of hidden goodies in there so this was definitely one I had to have um, it also was even though it's a kids book there's very few exceptions but this isn't necessarily just a kids book obviously um, so I actually had to pay 350 just for this one for 350 come on I bet you the original book was like 25 bucks so I'm fine with that. Okay, now keep in mind, I'll let you know, some of these came from Goodwill and some of them came from Savers. So I'll let you know which ones. This one is actually a Goodwill book. Uh, it was yellow tag day at Goodwill. I did not find a whole lot of yellow tag stuff, but a couple. Um, this one was a yellow tag and it was $2.99, which means it was half off $2.99, so $1.50. And this one is called Cat, You Better Come Home. 
and it's by Garrison Keller, who I love Garrison Keller. So, and it looked really funny. Garrison Keller to me is hilarious and it had great, great art in here. The imagery is really fantastic. So of course, I definitely had to pick that one up. Where's the, I opened it right up to a page and I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely getting this one. The art is just really spectacular. So that's a definite. So I paid a buck fifty for that one. This is a Goodwill book. Oh, you know what? This one isn't necessarily a kid's book though. And I'm gonna try to separate these videos because you know I'm kind of long-winded. And that one isn't really a kid's book, so you'll see that one on the next one. Alright, this was a Goodwill. Um, Goodwill, their kids books, there's a, their actual kids' books. I don't know why that one wasn't, but um, are 99 cents no matter what kind of book they are there are 99 cents and this one it was a purple tag so i did actually pay 99 cents but it's called the banshee it's a kid's book called the banshee come on uh it is by karen ackerman illustrated by david ray and it discusses ghosts let me see if I can find. There we go. Discusses banshees in a kid's book. Oh, absolutely, I will be getting that one. Now, I'm sure they do not talk about banshees, you know, in a, the scary way. But um, to be able to introduce banshees to children, especially children who may see spirit is a great thing and because it's in my family um you know that's a possibility for any grandchildren that i have this was a savers book and i i didn't even look in it because i knew it said by lewis carroll with illustrations from the disney archives <gasps> jabberwocky now lewis carroll did all the um alice in wonderland books and so, of course, I was going to get the Jabberwocky, which is a great story that Lewis Carroll did and actually talked about in the um, Alice in Wonderland books. So, I totally needed the Jabberwocky book. And the, I just thought that was really super cute. And there was some kind of an Alice in Wonderland thing going on. I'll have to show you. I, I got a couple things that were Alice in Wonderland that I was just totally excited about. So, of course, I got that one. This one was also a Savers book. So this was Once Upon a Forest. And I think these may be Disney characters too, because boy, I recognize these characters. This is by Turner. Hold on. It is by Carol Holman Gross Grosvenor. G R O S V E N O R. And just great pictures in there. I could not pass it up. And like I said, boy, these characters look very very familiar so i'm gonna have to look it up but they remind me of um like the secret of nim some of them and definitely i've seen this character someplace so i just have to find out where i've seen them some of them are hedgehogs i think but look at those gorgeous pictures love them so i got that one i got uh, some really interesting, neat kids' books from Savers this time, guys. So this was called The Tower. It is illustrated by Arlette Lavy, L-A-V-I. Published by Child's Play. Um, and I didn't even look through it, to be honest with you. On the back it says, In the face of ecological disaster, 
a leader comes down from his seat of power to find lasting values and policies for a better life in which everyone can share. Come on, how cool. So it's obviously teaching about being nice to our planet or else it will not be very nice to us. So uh, on the first page, look at, he's up in his ivory tower and he sees all the other stuff way in the background there. I just loved it. Look at the streets are full of garbage. And so I'm really kind of excited about that one. That looks like a great teaching book. Okay, again, Jay Nolan, have to get it. This was a Savers book. Welcome to the Ice House, illustrated by Laura Reagan. And any books by Jay Nolan, if I don't have them already, I definitely pick them up because they are always great animal books. She treats uh, nature and animals with incredible respect. Look at the wolves. And uh, definitely something that I want to teach my grandchildren. So, oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. So that was a definite. And then in the back, I believe, there's some um, information about the Arctic, which is the animals that they're talking about are all from the Arctic. So, yay, love it. I'm gonna save that one for later. Ghosts of the 20th century. Come on, anything, you know, talking about ghosts, I had to. But look at all of the pictures in here. Really great. JFK, Cuban Missile Crisis, Elvis. Here's, uh, it, talks, it starts with Albert Einstein talking to a little kid. How cool. Then he walks him through Orville Wright. And they walk through history together, talking about historical figures who have lived in history. So, hell yeah. What an awesome book. They talk about war. They talk about music, they talk about politics. Here's uh, Harry Truman. So, uh, at history, uh, how great to teach kids. Look at, there's the civil rights movement. Hold on, motorcycle. Here's hippies, so the, the flower generation. Um, really, really a great way to teach kids about hi history. And they start the millennium. Happy new millennium, Einstein. So, really great. And then they talk about 20th century people. Uh, Henry Ford, Mary McLeod Balthoon, Adolf Hitler, Gandhi, Mohandas Gandhi, and Frank Elvis Presley, Golda Meir, Vladimir Lenin, Theodore Roosevelt, Martin Luther King Jr. Just really interesting to walk kids through history with Einstein. I thought that was cool. Next, The Gift of You, The Gift of Me. This is by El Regalo Tuo. An El Regalo Mio. Oh no, that's The Gift of You, The Gift of Me in Spanish. So this book had a couple different languages in it. Um, words by Nyla J. Webster, illustrations by George M. Ulrich. And it is in both Spanish and English. So I thought, no matter what it is, and it sounds, it looks great, as each day ends, Jamil walks down the lane towards his tree friends. 
and he hears them murmuring. Thank you, rain, and thank you, sun. Really neat. Thank you, they whisper in harmony, for the ring around the moon at night, for the western sky, and the northern lights. And then the Spanish version is right next to it. So it's a great uh, multilingual uh, kind of book. And how wonderful when you want to teach your children to be as multicultural as they can. Yay! Okay, I got three books by the same author that I thought, yay, I love this concept. Okay, so the author is Bird Baylor and Peter Parnell. And there's three books by them uh, both that I got at Savers. This one is If You Are a Hunter of Fossils. So it's like a science-based book. Oh look, it's signed by the author. Happy birthday to Janice. Oh, happy wishes, Bird Baird. So Bird Baylor signed the book. I love that. I didn't know that ahead of time. Awesome. So this one talks about hunting fossils. And, you know, I'm totally a rock hound and love to look for fossils. I have tons. So anything that encourages kids to start looking uh, at their environment sounds good to me. Let's see if the rest of these are signed. The Table Where Rich People Sit by Bird Baylor. Pictures by Peter Parnell. So this one is not signed, but that's okay. I didn't know the first one was going to be signed. So this, I'll read the back for this one. Mountain Girl knows her family doesn't have enough money, so her name is Mountain Girl. Cool. Don't her parents see her worn out shoes or the patches on her little brother's pants? But as the family sits around their scratched up kitchen table and discusses the subject, her parents say they're rich. They begin to count up the value of the things they have. How much is it worth to be able to see the sky all day and feel the wind and smell the coming rain? Or to watch a cactus bloom or to sleep outside under the stars? After a while, Mountain Girl begins to realize money may not be as important as she thought. Could her family really be rich after all? <sighs> what a wonderful story of what's important. And beautiful nature-based pictures. I love it. Perfect. I don't know this author, but now I'm going to have to look him up. Everybody needs a rock. Yay! Of course everybody needs a rock. <laughs> So, they start way, way back. Look at the face coming out of the rock. Oh, it's beautiful. So anything that has to do with rock hounding is an absolute for me. Rule number two, when you're looking at rocks, don't let mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or even best friends talk to you. You should choose a rock when everything is quiet. Don't let dogs bark at you or bees buzz at you. But if you if they do, don't worry. The worst thing you can do is go rock hunting when you are worried. Rule number three. So this is rules about rock hunting. Really cute. Beautiful. Love it. Okay, and well, I'm going to go two more. And then I will switch because we're at 25 minutes, so that will be perfect for the kids' books part. Um, which one do I want to do first? I'll do this one first. Okay, so this book is called Unspoken. It is a story from the Underground Railroad by Henry Cole. In this haunting, wordless story, a young girl discovers a runaway slave hiding in her family's barn. The stranger's fearful eyes weigh upon her conscience, and she must make a difficult choice. Will she have the courage to do what she knows is right? Unspoken gifts of humanity unite the girl and the runaway, as they each face a journey, one following the North Star, the other one following her heart. With striking graphite illustrations that glow on every page, 
Henry Cole has infused this unusual Underground Railroad story with warmth and compassion. And look at the, the illustrations are just gorgeous. So as far as I can tell, there's no words. I believe that was the point. So the story is told through his pencil drawings, which by the way are absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And tells the story of the Underground Railroad, of this little girl, see the eye? Which, you know, I love that it's gonna encourage the children to make up their own words for the story. And once they know it, they can make up all kinds of words. How beautiful. Really gorgeous, gorgeous drawings. So again, so happy to have it. Okay, so the last one. This is called Music in the Wood. It's by Cornelia Cornelison. Photographed by John McClellan. And this is, it says on the inside here, Bef before musicians stride onto a stage or the conductor lifts his baton, an instrument maker must work his magic. Martin Cornelison makes violins, violas, and violin, con violin cellos. Come into this premier Luther's workshop as he crafts a Baroque cello. Stunning black and white photographs show each step from the day Cornelison chooses the finest wood to the time months later when his hands, when he hands the instrument to its new owner, renowned Belgian cellist Roll Dialtons. On the compact disc, especially made for this book, Dialtons plays his new cello, affording readers the remarkable experience of seeing the instrument being created and then hearing it played by a master musician. And the CD was in there. So I thought, ah, oh, how awesome to be able to see this work of art from the beginning with the wood. How he's choosing the wood. He begins to shape it. and work on it. You can see his workshop. I just thought what a cool way to learn the love and appreciation of music than to see these handcrafted gorgeous instruments coming to life and then to be able to hear this exact instrument that is photographed here by a master magician, magician, musician. <laughs> so that was really lovely. And I have not heard the disc yet, but the disc was there and it looks brand new. So yay, how cool. I just love interesting different kind of stuff like that. So, retail therapy there was my first half for all the kids books which you know just love them I can't help it we will go on with the second half which involves a couple books and some different kind of stuff blessings guys <laughs>